does your vote count in the USA and what is the Electoral College? The Electoral College is a group of people appointed by each state who formally elect the president and the vice president of the USA. To understand how this process began and how does it work today, we need to look at the Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution of the United States. Since 1964, uh, there have been 538 electors in each presidential election, 435 representatives, 100 senators, and 3 electors from the District of Columbia. In each state, the number of electors and electoral votes is established and based on the population size of that state. So, for example, there are some states who can be considered more important than others, like California, Texas or New York, because they have more electoral votes than the others. Uh, to win, the candidates need to reach 270 electoral votes. And so, it's normal that uh, the candidates need to focus on some states, such as California, for example, because the candidate who wins in that state take all the 55 electoral votes, while the candidate who loses in that state wins zero votes. Uh, then, at least, we need to make the difference between safe states and swing states. The safe states are particular states who in the last five or for election and um, presidential election have been always Republican or Democrats, while the swing states are some states that in the last uh, um, presidential election were or Republican or Democrats, such uh, twice Republican and twice Democrats, so are not like the safe states and the president, uh, the future president cannot uh, base his presidential election on this particular state. And here we are at one of the most important and fundamental questions about the American elections. Why do Americans always vote on Tuesdays? Does anyone know? We know that in the Declaration of Independence and the, in the Constitution of the USA, there is anything about this question. We know that everything comes from a stupid law of 1845. In that period, you had to travel on horseback uh, and travel for one day from your town to the city to vote. We know that uh, on uh, Sunday you could not travel because uh, the Sabbath was considered as the holy day of the week. So you needed one day to go to vote. You had to set off on Monday and to arrive to the place to vote on Tuesday. Uh, nowadays there is a, a, a bill, a, a new law, which wants to change that tradition of uh, the Americans to vote always on Tuesdays. Uh, Politicians say, say that uh, if the elections are on the weekend, a lot of people can vote instead that on Tuesdays. In the next American election, if you are 18 years old and older, a USA citizen and not a criminal, you can vote. It's democratic, but uh, it has always been like that. For example, in 1789, George Washington won the election with the 100% of the votes. But only 6% of American votes, white men and land owners. In 1830s, Jackson, the first common president of America, promised the universal suffrage, but it was a white man's suffrage. In 1850, 55% of adult population had the right to vote. In 1861, after the Civil War against slavery, the Fifth Amendment was a thing. It says race isn't an impediment. But intimidation prevented the vote. In fact, only 6% of Afro Americans vote. In 1892 in Mississippi, this is because the USA approved laws for Afro American that includes exam of lecture and writing, manipulated to don't be passed and vote taxes. In, the, in 1920, there was a very important win for women, the equal suffrage, but already only white girls could vote. Finally, in 1965, after years of fights and pain, United States passed the Vote Rights Act.
that eliminated the tax, the, the taxes for vote and protected the vote direct. All the citizens over 21 years old can vote. In uh, 1971, the vote age was decreased from 21 to 18. Unfortunately, after these years of fights to vote directs only, 60% of the people uh, that can vote to this.